Some scandals are so massive that they're simply hard to believe. But this one is true. As many as one million white English children may have been the victims of Muslim rape gangs, better known as grooming gangs, in towns up and down Great Britain. Policy analyst George Igler. I mean, when you counter an issue that is just so unbelievable, just so outside your frame of reference and understanding, the immediate human reaction is just not want to believe it at all. Perhaps even harder to believe is that while there have been prosecutions, British authorities have still not stopped this criminal activity. There's a particular problem involving Pakistani heritage men who target young, vulnerable white English girls. Not my words, but a member of parliament, Jack Straw, who also said these Pakistani heritage men view white English girls as, quote, easy meat. This is when some shout racism, but here are the facts. Calculations based on convictions show that a British Muslim male is 170 times more likely to be part of a sex grooming gang than a non-Muslim. And there are no recorded instances of non-Muslims doing this to Muslim girls as part of a criminal enterprise. In one local jurisdiction, it was estimated that six out of seven Muslim males either knew about or were part of a grooming gang. What you do not have is any example of non-Muslim men targeting Muslim girls for this organized form of abuse. So the argument that this crime exists everywhere is not only false, but is being deliberately cultivated by the media and by the government inquiry that is kicking the can down the rows. The grooming gangs have been traced back as far as the late 1980s. At-risk white English girls, often from broken homes and some as young as nine years old, were wooed or groomed by teenage Muslim boys called Romeos, and even by groups of Muslim men who hung around school gates. The plan was to make the girl feel important. She was given gifts and drugs, but she was being groomed to be a drug-addicted prostitute. Then came the gang rapes. The girls were threatened with death if they tried to flee. It's not just sexual abuse. It is unspeakable levels of violence. Victims being raped with knives, victims being raped with bottles, uh, victims having their tongue nailed to tables. These are sometimes girls who are being picked up from children's homes on a Friday, uh, are being raped during the course of the weekend by hundreds of men and then returned with bleeding groins back to the uh, children's homes on a Monday morning and they don't do anything about it at all. Christine's uh, goddaughter was preyed on by the grooming gangs uh, and is helping girls through the group Women Against Grooming. They pulled up by the side of her in cars. They tried to get her in the car. They were talking to her. Come on, come with us, we'll take you here, we'll take you there. Were you saying that the authorities make it sound like it's the, the yeah, English it's, girl's fault? Yeah, or like, the parents' fault. It's your fault because you haven't got control of your child. If you are a young English girl, particularly between the ages of 9 and 14, and you find yourself subject to the perversions of Muslim men, you effectively exist in a country where the forces of law and order don't exist at all. Stephen Lennon, also known as Tommy Robinson, former leader of the English Defense League, was just a young boy in the town of Luton when he learned a family member had been victimized by a grooming gang. My cousin was raped and she was found naked running from the Muslim community, age 13. The police wouldn't help. All the police would say is she's a drug addict. She was a drug addict because they got her hooked on drugs after grooming and raping her. Some say grooming gangs originate from a particular region of Pakistan, but others point out that the Quran encourages Muslims to take enemy women as sex slaves and that Mohammed had sex with a nine-year-old wife. ISIS defends sexual slavery as Islamic, saying enslaving the families of the infidels and taking their women as concubines is a firmly established aspect of the Sharia or Islamic law. The reason these crimes were covered up and continue to this day is political correctness. No one wanted to be called a racist. The definitive book on this scandal is Easy Meat by Peter McLaughlin, who declined an on-camera interview for safety reasons. He told us journalists would not speak about it because the perpetrators were mostly dark-skinned and Muslim. Childcare professionals used political correctness as an omerta, 
a code of silence concerning what the public was allowed to know. These girls are the victims of a multicultural revolution, and it's certainly an indication of the fact that this accusation of racism is potentially the most powerful political weapon known to man. This is also an example of what can happen in a country of 60 million where the press just refused to report, where the cries of all these agencies fail, fail to merely discuss what's going on, and it's only going to get worse for this reason. The cover-up was eventually exposed, yet the grooming gangs continue to operate. One victim told a British newspaper, nothing has changed, not in the slightest. It's still the same scale as before. They get sexual kicks out of ruining the most precious possession that those people have, their daughters. Stephen Lennon warned that there will be repercussions. But there will be a lot of blood spilled in this country and it'll be on the hands of our leaders. And there'll come a time when they'll realize what they've done. And the country's people will realize what they've done as well. They've sold us out, they've destroyed our nation, they've destroyed our culture. Dale Hurd, CBN News, London.